Hello, I'm host Eric Rose, talking with famous people, and I am here with some old friends, Eccentric M and Basement Overlord, and assorted others not on camera, including JC on the mic, Mega Bro chiming in periodically, Yukonda, who I've never heard or met before, which is cool, always nice to see a new name in here, could be an old friend with a new name, you never know. 666, I've seen you around before, I don't think I've heard from you uh, on the mic before, but it's cool you're here again. Contract under Guadalupe first sale and Callum. So we were about to talk about Basement Overlord's recent conversation with an ENTJ regarding socionics. First off, did this ENTJ come into the conversation knowledgeable with strong opinions about it or were there to learn or what? Well, okay, so I've actually known her for like a few years, and she's been in Sociox for like, you know, a few years. Um, she's she's actually in, we talked about subtypes last night, she's an NI ENTJ. So she comes off a bit differently than Chad Crandall in that she's more, she seems more willing to weigh different options. So we basically just brainstormed the entire uh, hour or so. We started off talking about quadras, the... Uh, Gamma and Delta Quadras, and then we moved on to a really interesting topic that um, you guys, I think, have never talked uh, talked about before, which is um, positive and negative charges on functions. Positive so and like, negative charges on functions, huh? Yeah. So positive S, uh, positive FE versus negative FE. So, for example, positive FE is going to be more of the upbeat merry emotional expression whereas negative FE is going to be more of the um, dramatic dark emotional expressiveness okay what about how does that work with N um, so um, I don't I can't remember exactly what NE positive but I think um, in general, it's it's reductionistic is negative versus like creation. What's the opposite of reductionistic? I don't even know. Creationistic, it's expansionistic, or expansionistic would be the positive extrovert intuition. So the positive extrovert intuition um, would be, I think, generating a lot of possibilities. And negative intuition would be maybe uh, reducing tearing, tearing shit down. Yeah, reducing the amount of possibilities. And so these, the positive and negative charges relate to the quadras. Well, this sounds familiar to Mega Bros notion the other day of a destroying kind of uh, action versus a conquering kind of action on any and SE in the sense that it's it's uh, any is kind of defensive by nature inherently it it attacks to prevent or something like that whereas SE is more wants to conquer and subsume the thing it, it sees the thing is attacking as good whereas any sees the thing is attacking as bad okay well I just put the link in there right now and um, it says a little bit about the, the charges of SE. So like positive SE would be like a retention of power versus negative SE would be the attainment of power that does not yet exist. I don't, I don't like that power focus for SE. I don't see if SE is necessarily manifesting that way. Well, in socionics, SE is very much related to power. The way the way that yeah, Sociolans thinks of SE is they think of it as uh, uh, objective sensing, which is that how much force do I need when I walk into a room to do anything? It's your inner Stalin. <laughs> Actually, I think Stalin was um, an ISTP. Was he? They that, they typed him as that. Pe the people over at the Sociolans community. God damn it, do I gotta muster my inner Stalin around here? 
<laughs> I think you have to. I think to get that thousand subscribers is quite necessary. <laughs> okay. Well, um, that's funny. Uh, it's because eight is three. So being my my inner Stalin is my uh, role function according to socionics. Yeah. <laughs> that's my job in life. Yeah. To be. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, that's unfortunate to hear. Is that what I'm doing? Am I trying to get power? I don't think no, so. No, that's your role function. That's not your end goal. You might come off that way. Oh, I come off that, get that way. Th well, here's the thing. You're trying to get those thousand subscribers, and you're trying to attain that YouTube bonus, but for a reason that's definitely not related to power, right? Uh, correct. Oh, well, I mean, it's related to freedom. Again, education. Yeah. It mostly is related to freedom more than anything else. It's like uh, my own freedom to to get money for not doing anything. I so say your freedom as opposed to the freedom of others. I, I mean, that, so that's oh, like a wow. dictatorship. Yeah, that's, that's pretty selfish, right there. You bring up a good point. I, I, Let's I, gather I, everyone I, and take their time so I get money. Yeah, start a revolt here. You know, this is the funny thing. Is somehow. People think this is bad, right? But at the same time, <laughs> I think it's good. I, I am stalling. At the same time, this is what I'm telling you. It's like I didn't start the channel for that purpose, but once I see that it has the purpose to liberate me in that fashion, I I'm like, well, I should try to do that. And <laughs> I, I just thought, I mean, it's like uh, if you if you this is this is plain, right? I am avoiding doing shit I should be doing instead of this. Yeah. So if I can get money for playing, it's not like I it's not like I'm trying to charge you guys personally, right? I don't say, mm -hmm. "All right, give me $5 if you want to hang out with me and talk." <laughs> you know, if you <laughs> with YouTube Red, you can do that now, Eric. So if you want to try it, uh, you you could you could pay $250 to hang out with Trey Pierce. Well, hold on, host Eric. <laughs> you you specifically charge people for quadrabble. I have yet to charge uh, I anybody. I charge uh, the only thing I try to charge people for, and nobody's bought one yet, is a license to quadruple. Okay, <laughs> I want to try. And what? It, because the rules are, you have to send me eight dollars in coins by snail yeah. mail. I'm surprised no one has done that. What well, about? Um, have you got famous people licenses? A license to be a famous person? Uh, and you can you, attach that to the show. I, you know, I should issue them to you guys all who are famous people. The, the rule on that is you're a famous person as soon as you've at least said one or two words in the chat of one episode of talking with famous people. That's the minimum to become a famous person. If you just sit there and you never say a single word ever, then you're not actually a famous person yet, although I might misrefer to you as one. This is the nomenclature rule that Eric sometimes follows. So it's like like us on Facebook. It's kind of like that advertising thing. I, Comment I mean, on this YouTube video, and you'll get a title. <laughs> you'll get a title. <laughs> I mean, no, it, it, the, oh, I see. Well, it's just for um, it's it's just the, the the thing I came up with. It's just the the only idea that's remained the same throughout the whole thing is that yeah. I tell. And at first, it was it was obviously just, and it still is obviously just, but. I tell people like you know the first or second person I've ever been on talking to famous people I'm like now you're a famous person you can call yourself a famous person you're like the only one in the whole world isn't that nice well, and, and it was funny you know so I just kept doing yeah. it I don't know I think we need to expand that and have a hierarchy of uh, ranks for famous people so like you comment once you're like a minor celebrity you know you you actually put your face on video you're like a superstar like we just like we just like expand that stuff you know well you know that's what I need in life to be perfectly honest is is like ISTP shit like that you know I I have no I, it's gone I mean, from it just, dictatorship to cult now uh, right it sounds, it sounds completely <laughs> it sounds like arbitrarily hierarchical to me it would probably be appealing to people I bet that's the weird thing I, it, I don't, it would. Eccentric M doesn't like it. I don't like it because we're both NE doms. <laughs> it would give some people that incentive to, uh, you know, talk on the show without just texting, you know? Well, like, as far as I'm concerned, you're a host, but there's a couple people I don't put any title in front of. You, I don't put a title in front of Mega Bro usually, 
I think I may have called him a famous person Mary Grove a couple times. Like better, like, as is, you know? Well, but, yeah, I think it's uh, often eccentric him. I don't know if I always call you. I don't think I usually... It depends. I don't know. You Most, sometimes call me, call me a supervisor. Oh, yeah, my supervisor, right. You're, you're Well, you are not my supervisor, though. INFP is my supervisor. I was miscalling you that if I called you that. Uh, you are my... Uh, I think you're my benefactor. Wait, what type are you? NFP. ENFP. ENFP. No, you you guys are uh, you guys are kindred. You guys both share extrovert intuition and then have a different second function. It's like I'm kindred with INTPs. Okay, let's stop this video here and start do and do that socionic inner type next. Okay. What what is that called? You say it's kindred. I don't remember that being a name of a socionic inner type. So let's figure yeah, that out, kindred. and then we'll. Kindred? That's not a name of one of them. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, hey, I'll I'll go into detail. Uh, okay, all right. We'll find out next. I'm talking with <laughs> people. Thank you for watching.